Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Shell Black Whiteboard where we help you get the most out of the Salesforce platform. I'm your host, Shell Black, president and founder of shellblack.com and Salesforce MVP. And this segment today is about opportunity reporting. As a system administrator, or maybe you work in sales operations, we're gonna do a lot of reporting around opportunities, reports and dashboards. So I wanna dedicate a segment on what you can do out of the box and maybe some things you didn't know you could do with opportunity reporting. So with that, I'm gonna slide over here I'm gonna talk about a couple of fields that are available on opportunity reports that uh, are not on the page layout. These are just available on reporting. Uh, that's why I've got these green asterisks. These two are available on opportunity reports. Age is just simply, if you have an open opportunity, Salesforce is gonna look at when an opportunity was created and today's date, and it will express uh, a number field, a number of days that an opportunity has been open. If you flip an opportunity to closed, whether closed lost or closed won, you're gonna get a zero on that. Stage duration, another number of days field. It is the number of days an opportunity has been in the current stage. So if you go from stage one and you've been in that stage for 47 days and you move it to stage two, this number is gonna reset. It's gonna reset back to zero. So let's say that you have the instance where you wanna track the duration of every stage in your sales process. You can do that, but you're gonna to have to build some custom fields to pull that off and leverage something like workflow. So to do that, you're gonna to have to have a date field that corresponds with every stage, and you're gonna to have to use workflow to populate that date. So you're just gonna have a workflow with a criteria that basically says if stage equals this, as soon as a record hits that criteria of a new stage, you're gonna use a field update on your workflow action to populate today's date, today just being today with the parentheses like that. And you're gonna do that every time the stage changes, you're gonna populate all those date fields. Then you just use another custom formula field to say, do the math between this date and this date. The date that this, this opportunity went to this stage and the date that this opportunity went to this stage will give you the number of days and now you can start tracking it down to the stage level. Another custom field, it's not really a custom field, this is actually a report, custom report summary formula. So a lot of clients wanna know what's my win rate uh, of all the opportunities that we've got out there. I would really like to know as a company or maybe a win rate by a salesperson. So when you're in the report wizard, you have the option of keep, again, creating these custom summary formulas. You create one with the output of a percentage and the way you do that is there's a field called one, which is all your closed one opportunities and you summarize that to get a count of one opportunities and you divide that by the row count of basically all your opportunities. So number of one opportunities divided by all opportunities gives you your win rate. And you can show that as a percentage, uh, summarizing group by that win rate on your reports. Um, something else I like to do with clients and they seem to like is, I wanna know how many days on average or how many days does it take for us to win a deal? And it's nice if you wanna do an average because you can take all the days or for all your opportunities, how many days does it take to close and get your average either for the company or again by a salesperson. It's a custom field, it's a formula, it's a little long, but it's not that bad. I'm gonna walk you through it real quick. It's an if statement. So if this is true, then do this. Otherwise, comma, do that. So if is one, the opportunity is one, the true statement would be, I wanna take the close date and subtract the created date. So the date we won the deal minus the date where we created the opportunity and give me a number. Now, with created date, that's actually a date time syntax. You have to actually wrap the created date in what's called a date value to take it from a date time down to a date. Then you can do a date minus a date. So hopefully not too bad. If an opportunity is one, do the math between these two dates. Give me a number. If it's not one, the else statement of that is a zero. So until it's one, it's going to express as a zero. All right. So let's switch to this side of the board and talk about other couple things. There is a folder that comes in Salesforce just called Opportunity Reports. If you've never poked around there, there's quite a few reports that come out of the box. I encourage you to run them all and see what they do. If you like some of them, you can always do a save as, modify the criteria, and, and, and throw it into a custom uh, report folder. Some ones you should look at, stuck opportunities, an aging report, stage duration, what we were just referring to just a second ago, pipeline trend, take a look at those. I think you'll like that. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to get used to opportunity reporting, Go into this report folder, steal shamelessly. Salesforce has got a lot of pre can out of the box reports you can run. Okay, another thing with opportunity reporting, there is a filter that you'll see on opportunity reports called the show filter. And there's some pick list values that you can choose from. 
And based, if you're using role, the role hierarchy, this could have a, a dramatic difference on the output of your reports. So you'll see a filter on the show filter for value. You could pick my, my team, or all. So let's see how this applies if we're looking at our role hierarchy. So in this scenario, we've got a VP of sales. I've got four regional managers. And below those regional managers, I have groups of salespeople. If I filter my report on my, and I am the VP of sales, and I run that report, I'm only going to see opportunities where I, the VP of sales, are the opportunity owner. If this person runs that my report, same thing. Only opportunities owned by that regional manager, not including this person, not including their subordinates. If you change that report to my team, the data is going to change dramatically because now you're grabbing all the records that I own, but also all the records owned by my subordinates below me in the role hierarchy. So if this regional manager runs a filter that has the my team filter, they're going to see the opportunities that they own plus all the records owned by the folks below them. Same thing, VP of sales runs a my team report. They're going to see all the reports, they all the opportunities they own, plus all the records of everybody below them in the role hierarchy. If a salesperson runs a my team report, it basically just gives them their opportunities. Of course, if you don't want to worry about the role hierarchy and you just want to grab all opportunities in the database, you can set it to all. So if you're doing large analysis company-wide, just set it to all. So why would you have filters like this? When you're doing dashboards, a lot of times you'll have a dashboard per salesperson. So you can write one set of reports, all filtered on my team. Then you can set something called the running user on the dashboard. And depending on which person that is, whether it's a salesperson, the regional manager, this regional manager, or that regional manager, you don't have to hard code the names of all those salespeople. You just let Salesforce use the role hierarchy to understand which reports they want to get. So I can want, write one set of reports for my team, change the running user from this regional manager to that regional manager, and that's going to grab their set of opportunity reports. Pretty cool. OK, so I want to wrap up opportunity reporting with a little section called maintenance. And, and my thought here is, is we want to look for opportunities in the database that haven't been touched in a while, that need some love. And so a couple of fields that we can leverage. One is last activity. So last activity meaning when was the last time we've logged an activity, whether it's a task, a, a meeting, log a call. Uh, the other one is last modified, meaning when was the last time we've updated a field on the opportunity? So the stage, close date, uh, amount, maybe the probability. Between those, you can start running reports and start filtering and ask Salesforce to bring you back, show me all opportunities where the last modified date is greater than 90 days. Uh, or a last activity within a certain amount of time. You can then stack rank it and see your oldest to newest and do it by salesperson if you want and let them know, hey, these are the ones you need to go back and, and work. Another one that I like to do is run a report and set the report criteria that says where the close date is less than today. And what I'm trying to look for is a close date of an open opportunity that's in the past. So that tells me really, really two things. Either we need to push the close date forward if it's still open, because we haven't won it, or we need to close it out. We either need to win the deal or, or lose the deal. So it's really kind of a, just tell me all the ones that need, just need to go back and be updated. This is a good report to run at the end of the month. OK, so that wraps up our segment on opportunity reporting. We would love to hear your feedback, and you can reach us a couple of different ways. You can hit me at Twitter at shell underscore black, or you can email me at whiteboard at shellblack.com. Love to hear your comments. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you soon.